Rats, rats eat eggs. Hello, everybody. This podcast is Lava. My name is James Font, and with us, as always, Sam Shoemaker, Silas Couldn't Make It, and our very special guest, TEDx performer, Harry Daniels. <laughs> and he's an, he also hosts a podcast. That's right. So he was just about to tell us about his stand-up Ow. routine that he's been working on. That's yours. Oh, yes. So I'm testing this. I want to test it on you. This. Okay. And I'm going to laugh at anything you say, so this, I'm not a good metric for this. <laughs> That's right. That's what it's supposed to do, but nobody pays You might not laugh at this. I don't know. I don't know how... So so here's... All right. No explanation. Let's just try it. All right. Awesome. So you know how sometimes uh, you might have had like a really hot teacher? Who yeah, really hot. You wouldn't have even... <laughs> like you wouldn't even care if they went to jail yeah. for being with you. Yep. Or if you're like more innocent. And you decide, like, you would daydream about, you know, their partner tragically dying and you stepping in <laughs> and uh, and kind of being a shoulder for them to cry on yep, and yep. then life together. So, anyways, I was homeschooled. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> the thing is, that could be an opener. That that could definitely be an opener. Just come out. So, you know, you know back when you're in eighth grade. You're fantasizing about doing your teacher. Yep. So the worst part of that. Like, okay, good. I'm glad I, you I was, guys left. And, and you should say something about being in school in Alabama. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> the, the funny thing is, though. <laughs> oh no! To, no, to, I was I was thinking in my head like, okay, we, uh, you know, got, like he's gonna go through you know your your bit. But I was thinking in my head like. The funny thing is, I don't apply to this joke because I was homeschooled, <laughs> so I was like finishing the punchline. Yeah, like, you were already ahead of it. <laughs> All right, so actually, that ooh, yeah, I've known Harry's family. I was this was my first question, but okay. go for it. Okay, I've known Harry's family um, because all three of us were homeschooled and kind of in the same circles. Yep. But I've known Harry's family because his brother Stephen was interested in my sister for a while, and so we actually went over to their house a couple times, and I was really young. Yeah. And so I've known of you for a long time. And James. We, what's up? You were like a block away from me when we were children and we yeah, didn't even meet. <laughs> I know. This is tragic. Nah, it's not tragic. We met a couple of years ago. We could have hung out while they were, you know, courting <laughs> each other or whatever. I don't even know if they courting. courted necessarily. <laughs> they wrote letters. I remember seeing a bucket of letters. A bucket of letters. Burning in the backyard. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is my barrel, my burning barrel. Yeah. This is okay. My, this is my so, and so what, I what, don't know. Yeah, when I don't remember very much of it. I just remember you having a very sandy backyard mm-hmm. and there was a swing. Yeah. That's what I remember. Yep. When when did so we've never met before this. I don't think. Or have we? Like officially? Have we? I don't I feel like we have. Formally. Okay. Hey, my name is James. I'm Harry. Nice to meet you, Harry. <laughs> we've probably met some. I feel like we've seen each other at like at like graduations or something like Maybe that. Maybe something. I think we've seen each other, but I don't know. You're right. I don't think I've ever met, but I feel like I know you because yeah. I've seen all your stuff online. Right. And I've talked to you. Yeah. And we almost I was almost on his podcast <laughs> and then Tim couldn't show up. And then we just didn't do it. Yeah. And it's fine. Yeah. The, the, I'm pretty boring to talk to. After I'm really I'm really glad that we didn't no way. You guys are awesome. I've been I've been catching up on episodes because I haven't listened in a while. Anyways, so do you do, you've seen me before? I don't yeah. Know. What do you, what do you know about uh, what was your question? You were gonna ask me. Yeah, I was gonna ask you like so what what was what's your initial uh perception of old Harry Daniels? Old Harry Daniels? I don't know old Harry Daniels. Yeah. This is something that someone told me I should ask you. How do you feel about your name being an objective? Ad, ad, adjective. And something's Harry and then Oh and it just sounds like a weird sex position. The Harry Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go I, back tonight and give a Harry Daniels. I never <laughs> thought her, of that. Give her the old Harry D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. I've never considered that. The this is I forget who had, who told me to ask that, but that brilliant. Was, Whoever that was, good job. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so what do you do? What do you do for a living? Uh, currently, absolutely nothing. Sick. <laughs> yeah. What did you do for a living before you're doing nothing? You have a piece of grass in your hair. I was mowing and blowing Sick. the the grass. Sweet. Is it still? No, no. It's no, no, you're good. So, I, so I'm not doing absolutely nothing. I've taught guitar uh, right. and drums since I was like 18. I'm 34 now, so that's been a little mm-hmm. while. Um, do that once a week, which is fun. For my full-time job on May 31st, that came to an end. I was uh, one of the 
staff members out at the farmhouse in Metamora, Ohio. They do some pretty cool stuff. Okay. What is the farmhouse? The farmhouse is um, a Methodist church Okay, that has a barn, and that barn is super <laughs> old. Uh, one of the kind of like... Hey, I'm on the right path is chicken coops okay. for me. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Our first apartment was a renovated chicken coop. That's yeah, sweet. And Kate's, yep, pretty sweet. And then uh, found this job. And their whole thing is doing these big barn parties in a rural community. That's farm cool. community. Uh, just a way to bring people together, neighbors to know each other. Because everybody's miles apart. or Miles apart. But I think the bigger issue is just in spaces like this, because of the focus on convenience over a century or so like farming's tough yeah and so really let's is. let's lean into convenience as often as possible for our own sanity except now it's so convenient i don't ever have to really see anybody no and so there's this phrase and or myth in rural communities like i know my neighbors when really what they mean is i know i know what they look like i know who used to live in that house 40 years ago yep. <laughs> <laughs> right that's how it always is but knowing of the neighbors is actually a tough thing and so couple of years back, a um, girl was murdered out there by a okay. neighbor. So oh, a neighbor wow. was murdered by a neighbor. Oh. And and so the church had this old barn. Is that a train? It is a train. That's a cool we train. Are. We can literally, if you walk at my back door, can throw a rock at it. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's nice. pretty sweet. We'll do that great after the for, podcast. <laughs> it's great for audio mixing. It actually, with these mics, since they, I have them turned and Way with down. a noise gate, you can't nice. hear him. Sorry, everyone. There's a train. Hey, there's a train. You I'll leave know. a bit in. Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> probably in lots of episodes. Uh, anyway, so the yeah the the church started going like well, let's let's create spaces for neighbors to know each other well, yeah. and so that's that's what, really cool. That's what they do. A lot of local food, and then you just quit or you uh, just yeah resigned. I I was yeah. Let's let's call we'll it, it. We'll say resign. Let's call it. Hey, could you please resign? Cool. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to go into that? Uh, we could. I can cut anything you want out. Right. So yeah, I think I think the there was a couple of there's a direction that they want to go. That direction is going to cost money, and the what I was bringing to the staff or to the the community uh, wasn't what they were going to need for this next season. So. Gotcha. It was. It all ended pretty dang good. Like okay, I was like, this is. So it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. No. Okay, good. And still love being out there. Like I just went out there last Friday night and did a. They had another one of their events, the farmhouse Sabbath. Sweet. Um, so got to play some music with some friends. And That's fun. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I like to ask people: What did you want to do when you were twelve? When I was twelve, that's a perfect question, man. Because right when I was 12, I figured out what I wanted to do. It's always cool. I wanted, Sam and I still don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I currently no longer know. Oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> You're like, I've accomplished it. So now, now I don't I'm know 12 what again, and it's yeah, really weird. Yeah. When I was 12, I really wanted to be a youth pastor. I figured out how to. Why? Uh, There's a guy named Nate who was okay. 15 years old, so he's automatically way cooler than me. Well, yeah. And Three years makes a whole world of difference. <laughs> it does. And he paid attention to me too. And that's always awesome when an older yeah. kid pays attention to you and then they say sometimes you're like, you're more mature than the other 12 year olds oh, I know. And like, you go, oh, wow. thanks, Jeremy Ayers. <laughs> <That was laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good old Jeremy. Uh, I have not seen him in forever. So nobody has. <laughs> <laughs> you get married. You get married. You get married. And, and then you're gone for a year. That's right. <laughs> at least. Biblically, right? Biblically. Isn't that a thing? It's not, it, technically, you should. Yeah, it's a year long. Although the whole biblically thing, the whole biblical marriage thing is a whole yeah. scary. Isn't that fun? Let's go get married and then like go into a tent in the middle of the community. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to throw the bloody sheets over. <laughs> what the? Yeah. <laughs> they were a lot more uh, close let's communities. Bring that back. Yeah, let's, do, let's bring that back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's another thing I do. I officiate weddings. So maybe I I, I, can... I will link that in the description. He has an Instagram where he yeah. he's officiating weddings. Officiating it's it's wedding. really cool. It's really fun. Uh, what were we talking about? We're talking about what you wanted to do, and you yeah. Were so I wanted to be a super cool youth pastor. Guy named Nate, fifteen years old, and he was super cool because he was talking to me. Um, super nice guy, and I, it was just that experience of someone reaching out and spending time with you when they didn't have to because they had yeah. their own group of friends and people. And there was something about that 
even though he wasn't a youth pastor or youth he wasn't involved with that at all it was just like i want to do that and it made it it kind of made you want to make everybody included yeah yeah and so when i was 18 i started volunteering at a, a church in waterville and then when the that youth youth pastor took over as the head lead guy there um they said hey do you want to do youth pastoring so i did that me and my wife met through that and actually i have, I have a funny story about uh, yeah. a youth pastor and his wife anyway no, go for it. No, you were still talking. Uh, so they, um, so we we met. Well, we we got engaged in that environment. We like shared a job description. So interesting. <laughs> yeah, from from about twenty to twenty seven, I think. We full time job shared the same job description. Went to work every day together and came cool. home every day together. And it was pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, did the youth pastor thing and I accomplished it. That's cool. Dream so now achieved. you're like, well, all right, well, now what? <laughs> right. And I never wanted to be like a lead pastor. Ugh. <laughs> you're like, I can handle kids. You get <laughs> old, you wear suits. I can handle <laughs> I can handle kid problems. That's right. Adult problems, <laughs> I have those. <laughs> I don't want to I can't figure it. those out. Oh my gosh, yeah. Ooh. I'll leave them anonymous. Someone I know, uh, she was I think she was, let's say, just for I don't know the numbers. Let's say she was 17 and he was 15. Mm-hmm. And so she was a youth leader and he was one of the youth. And so she dropped out of being youth leadership so she could date him. <laughs> this is going back to his opening joke about the teacher yeah. and the student. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but not quite. But not, <laughs> they <yeah>. weren't related. <laughs> Valid point. This isn't Arkansas. <laughs> Alabama. Either one. Oh. Yep. They're both. A- Florida. All of them. <laughs> Kentucky. Just, Certain parts of Ohio. Pennsylvania. <laughs> so true. The Midwest. <laughs> or, you know, lots of places. What's the one place that's like the, the Mormon state? Is that uh, Utah? I, I, yeah, Utah. Utah, yeah. You, you want to know another weird thing that I read in the... I didn't... I just read the, the headline. It said, transgender woman saves sperm to have their own baby once the surgery is done. That's a lot. To unpack. That's, that's, that's a, like that's a couple different layers of you're like wow man weird, and the fact that like scientifically that works, I don't think but, it does. Or, but it does. But it well, doesn't. Yeah, I don't think it could because you would, oh, because <laughs> <laughs> you need you need an X X and an X Y, and you can't change your chromosomes, so you would have an X Y and an X Y. Well, then you just get an imported egg. Okay, uh, yeah. sure. Mm. Basically, this is my understanding. That's I'm a plumber. Um, <laughs> you would so you're, take. You're you would, really familiar. Yes, with all you of would this. take an egg from some random woman, an egg donor. Okay, so that makes sense. You would take your sperm, and then you're the incubator. Okay, that that that, that is the wait, only that part makes. And sense. And then you give birth to a child for some wait, reason. What? That's my understanding of it. That, I didn't. Do, I've done zero part, research. That part makes sense. In, I have never researched what is currently capable in terms of like getting the surgeries and everything. So I was thinking, okay, so can you through the transition, can you generate your own eggs? And then would you be able to fertilize your own eggs, which would be really weird. Does that make sense? I, like it, it I don't know. I don't replaced. know if you can generate your own eggs. I don't think you can, but I didn't know because there's so many different levels of like, right. I just I don't I've never researched it I've never gone to Google yeah, and typed in like can you can trans men make own eggs <laughs> like your double hand that's what, that's how you type <laughs> when you type retarded things <laughs> bing, 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 bing. oh my goodness so anyways oh. um all right well that's fun Sam what yeah. did you want to do when you're twelve we're not getting into that anyways oh <laughs> <laughs> Sam honestly that's not even a great question. I know. That's well, why I said we're no, not unpacking You're that. right. At 12, I just, I really didn't know what I was going to do. No, when we were 12, we were playing with Star Wars toys and trading oh, them, yeah. and then we I were burning them. I still am, but I mean. <laughs> hey. Totally. I just started a podcast. Yeah. Um. All right. What else should we ask Harry? Do you have any questions for Harry? I have several. I was going to ask him about the TEDx. Yes. But you already had that on your question yeah. mark. So, so what is, first of all, what is TEDx? For the people who don't know what TEDx is. TEDx. Yeah. So, because it is a side it's not TED, right? Yeah. I didn't give a TED talk. I gave a TEDx talk. So a TEDx 
uh, or, uh, event is community. What does TED stand for again? Because I didn't know that until I read it an article about it. Yeah, it's te- uh, technology education design. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, and then the X is. Sorry, I'm burping now. <laughs> <laughs> the beer got to me too. <laughs> right away, just like didn't hold back. The X, I'm not sure what the X stands for. I just know extraordinary it's- <laughs> exploration. <laughs> Extra Xylophone. awesome. <laughs> Uh, so those are community organized. So nobody is getting paid for those. Nobody, the, not the organizer, not the speaker. It's just all kind of volunteer. Actually, the organizer ends up spending a lot of money, and hopefully he can get sponsors for <laughs> yeah. the event and the ticket sales recoup some of that. But okay, cool. So ideally, you break even as just like to yep. create the event. Either break even, hopefully, or if you don't break even and you go over, then you use some of that for the next year because as the organizer, I guess you get the rights to do that same event the next year in the same town or something. Okay, that's cool. Now, were you asked to it? Yeah, that okay. was a bizarre thing. And actually... Did you just get messaged one day? <laughs> uh, no, a phone call. I was in Florida at the Disney World or Disney... Yeah, Disney One of World. those. <laughs> it's a Disney thing. And um, ended up getting a phone call super late at night. And my friend goes, hey, hey, we have not talked in like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> you want something from me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so he said, I was... Stream, like listening to your podcast the other day and you said something that made me think, man, Harry has gone uh, off and, the deep end <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, gone in a, in a direction that I guess aligned with one of the conversations we had 10 years earlier. And he's like, I would really like him to be one of the speakers at my TEDx event. That's awesome. And right. So on. where was it? Uh, in Bowling Green at, okay. the, at the university and one of their theaters. Can we watch it? Yeah, it's online. If you just I already did YouTube Good Harry job. Daniels, I did. it's usually the first one that's Sweet. popped up uh, for me. I, you know, every day, Harry Daniels. Oh, yeah, still the first result. That's good. What something? <laughs> else, <laughs> oh, let's just something check my I did is I, ty- I typed in my name, and then I, I, there's a uh, whitepages dot com, and you can find out where I live and my address and who I'm related to. Mm. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. You know what's funny though? I did the exact same thing because when you did it, I freaked out and I was like, oh my gosh, they know where I live. Of course, they already do, but you know, they know where I live. <laughs> and <laughs> I went on there and not only did it have the wrong address for me. No, it has the right one now. I checked last night. <laughs> he changed it. <laughs> He's like, I checked. You have the wrong one. You need to change it. I to checked this. last night because we were really? doing that at other people's house. It has your exact address right now. Dang it. Because. Well, Even what, down to the apartment A. I get that. What, what town do you live in? Archbold. Archbold. Okay. Yeah. So when I did it originally, it had the wrong address, which would have been, I think, my home address, like my home home address. It says you lived where you used to live. Right. Well, it said I lived there. And then it also said that I lived there with other people that were not my family members. So well, it, yeah, had, like, it got down. It got goats. down to all of your family. <laughs> yeah. The, the goats. <laughs> it was like, well, there, no, there was like a. Your sister's goats scared the crap out of me as a child. <laughs> they scared the crap out of everybody. <laughs> Just like, why are you so mean? <laughs> Don't hurt me. Because they're the greatest of all time. Oh, they were they were good. <laughs> there were some good times on the farm with those <laughs> monsters. We never had good those animals. Monstrosities. Like, you know, we had the It's because you and Russ are probably like shooting them with stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. It may have been Russ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or good. Jacob. I think Jacob like one time so for an example, we had like two roosters and a hen given to us, which doesn't mix well. Like you don't need two roosters. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love this story. This yeah. is a great story. Jacob got one of them, like, would provoke one of them with a broom because he was so scared of it that he then, like, provoked it, which just <laughs> heightened, like, it just escalated every <laughs> element of that situation. Was ready to go. One day we decided to have, like, a staycation. So we, uh, we camped out around our little fire pit there. And the last person to get up, I'm walking into the house in the morning and I just hear <laughs> behind me and I turn around. <laughs> And this rooster is like full battle oh, charge man. at me. And you know those spurs? Oh, yeah. He spurred me in the back of the knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so bizarre. I just you run into the house screaming, <laughs> crying. <laughs> Limping. <laughs> screaming, crying. The chicken just, you know, walks around the chicken yard like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just attacked one of those giants that feeds us. <laughs> and that's how you ate roosters. Yeah. <laughs> no, that one just died from Tourette's. Like... Wait, <laughs> I just see a rooster just... Kaido! <laughs> 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 
I love no, it. it actually it just died like from <laughs> twitching to death. We don't know what happened. It just it one day just died. So that's not Tourette's, right? No, well, there's, 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 there's different there's, times there's of Tourette's. No, there's true, different that's kinds true. of Tourette's. There's physical there's, Tourette's. Yeah. I think the only Sam has them. Yeah, when no. I kick him, he, <laughs> he <laughs> flinches every dang time. It's weird. I swing a punch at him and I miss, but he flinches. So I'm just like, <laughs> he has Tourette's, man. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's interesting because I know at least a couple people that have it, and all of their tics are physical. I don't know anybody that has a verbal tic, but yeah, yeah. So it, I guess it comes in multiple forms. It's, it's true. It's an interesting. Uh, I don't, I don't know what it is. It neurological a disease. It's not a disease. It's I a neurological know. something. Did you know there's a disease that makes your other organs turn into bone? Yes, I do know. That. I didn't know. It's that. called the bone man disease. That sounds Super terrifying. Weird. Oh yeah, it's, it's this world is so weird. <laughs> Life is strange. Go watch Roomy Official. They go through the top ten worst, <laughs> the top ten worst diseases. Hey, you know what? What if all your body was bone? <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> Suddenly bones. No, there. I remember a lady we knew. She had something similar to that. Where and there's like, like ten, hardening tendons organs? or muscles. Yeah, we're turning Ooh. super solid, and that's kind of strange. Anyways, the, kind the of rooster bone you d- want. died eventually. Yeah, the rooster eventually died with its good. head under its wing, twitching. You're like, good. <laughs> good. Okay, we, so what was... We felt no remorse. Shut up, Sam. <laughs> so, TEDx. I'm used to this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, which I think I already told you this the other night when you came out to that event. It's like, Sam, you're my favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is great, but when we have guests, he talks slightly too much, and I want to hear more about the guests. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you. That's, I've known you for years. That's valid. <laughs> Anyways, TEDx. What did you talk about at TEDx? Um, just death. Just death. Uh, yeah, you can, I talk, you can bring it even closer. You say you don't have to sit forward. Yeah, I don't. you can do what you want, man. Do what you want. You gotta figure it out. What there is what is the comfy what mic distance? Love? I know it. Uh, so at TEDx, I talked about death. So you get, no, you get on stage. Yeah. What happens uh, through your mind and on and through the people? How what? many people were there? There was like a hundred ish. That's crazy. So, and but this, it was, this was super the first dark event. Is that right? Yeah, first one, first TEDx in Bowling Green. They've done a TED Ed, which I guess there's like a TED Ed, a TED W, a TED. There's like Weird. lots of TED branch off. Things. I did not know. Is that complex? They're like, there's TED Talk where you actually get paid, and it's really huge. And then I'm not even sure if they get paid for that. Like I've heard people don't get paid for going to the TED. Who knows? But it's big. also promotional. Yeah, so like if, you're, you, if you have a book or something, someone's gonna like, oh, I read their, I heard yeah. their TED talks. So I'll buy or, so or you, know? you get people who do a TED and then they write a book and that's they. Find or you get right. on a very very small podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you could come on this. Too. <laughs> um, we're gonna be in the next TEDx, so that's yeah, right. we're gonna be talking that's about right. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a podcast <laughs> where we talk to people. And, uh, talking to people is good. <laughs> you should talk to people. Communication, everyone. <laughs> and do you have a mom? Call her sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so yeah, it's like a hundred people. The theater was super, super dark, which is totally out of my comfort zone. So like, you know, light, dark audience, and I am so used to conversational, toned. Or vibed. Uh, that would be bench. interesting. How long did you talk? Uh, 19 minutes. Sam, you have to talk to a group of people without them responding for 19 minutes. Ooh. That sounds horrible. Yeah. It's like college nightmares. Yeah, but although it, it, the tricky part for me is getting down to 19 minutes. Ooh. True. So I, again, youth pastor, and then I did some associate pastor stuff. and So you're a little more used to a crowd than Sam and I are. Yeah, and the my accidental... Average talk time is like 45 to 50 Sick. minutes. <laughs> so it's like, this is going to be a fun four hour podcast, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, too many of mine, like the the original cut will be three hours and 45 minutes. Yep. I'm like, we've been there. We did, we, we did that with, uh, yeah, I don't know if you listened to it, the Robert. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. We, I liked how you split it. Yeah. Because it was a, th- no, it was a three a, to four hour podcast. It was three and I and cut half it hours. down. I cut it down to three hours and then mm-hmm. split it into two because I was like, I think it'll be a little more bite-sized. He's nice. And honestly, he was one of, well, we haven't had like a long string of guests, but I hope we get him on again because I feel like we had the three hours, three and a half hours, and we could have done like three more. So I feel like a follow-up would be awesome. But Yeah, we could. Yeah. And if, if we're if going into the TED, <laughs> the, uh, I've been listening to you guys more recently too just cool. because of the, okay, I'm going on there. I want to make sure I get the vibe. And But I've been listening to you at double speed 
So I feel you all are like drugged right now. I'm talking <laughs> so super, slowly. Uh, You're no. super slow. I mean, I can uh, talk kind of faster. I know this is a tangent, but I just have to tell this story because it's, it. it's fun. I listened to a, I used to listen to a podcast more regularly that was Australian <clears throat> and it was purely just like, um, comic book entertainment news, um, regarding like nerdy type movies and things. Um, but one time they're like, one of our users said, if you listen to this at half speed, we just sound like a bunch of drunk raving lunatics. Yeah, that's and so awesome. I did. Yeah, we this party. Awesome. And it was hilarious. I can't do the half speed thing. I'm like, why is half speed an option on right? Podcast? It makes no sense to me. It worked once because there was, uh, I was listening to a book on tape. And whoever read it must have had a gun to their then head. Then they went to the thing. And then <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I put it down to 75, and that took you to like normal, normal, normal yeah, human yeah, yeah. conversation. <laughs> That's so, interesting. I, I'm re- helping record someone's audiobook right now. Oh, awesome. And when Sweet. I'm editing, I always increase the tempo by like double or triple so I can get through it a lot. So I almost wonder if like sometimes uh, I've there's never thought be a, of this. <laughs> yeah it's helpful man why don't i do this do this for your editing for the podcast <laughs> because i've listened to every single hour of every yep. podcast i know it and so then it ends up just taking forever it what i normally tell people is okay so the podcast was three hours it's gonna take double yep in order to edit in order to edit are all. you do you edit out ums um sometimes um <laughs> if you listen to one of our I can't remember which podcast it is oh. <laughs> Sam when we first started none of us could talk into a microphone right and I cannot remember which episode it is but it's... I specifically went through every time and he went he would he would I do that every dang teeth kiss thing every, way too much every single time he would start talking not just like every single time he'd go so and then they did and he'd say so a lot but I don't right. care about so Yep. But it's go, how I would pick up a thought. And so I would cut, there. I cut every single, and I put them all together and it's a minute and a half. It's so, <laughs> and it's really and it, uncomfortable. I put it all the way at the end and it's just. <laughs> one, of, one of my, I like swapping podcast battle stories. Uh, one of my recent. <laughs> <laughs> battle stories. I like that. Episodes. <clears throat> the guest ended up umming. Oh, an crap. incredible amount. And he would do the set. He'd go. Uh, talk like that was there was a beat to it, right? So uh, talk. So I end up the the full recording was two hours and ten minutes. Oh no! The oh no! Just the removal of uh uh, what it got down to an hour and fifty minutes. Oh my gosh! Okay, so real quick, say the first time <laughs> two hours and ten minutes. So twenty minutes of. Uh, I should have, I should have kept all of that oh and created a goodness. drum track. I was gonna say you can make a sick <laughs> oh beat with my that. Goodness! And, but then what was bad is we started colluding minutes. in it. So it wasn't just him. Eventually, the more he said it, the more I started saying it, and then oh. I was just like. Oh, You're just sitting there editing like, I'm going to kill myself. It's one of those social really? comedian things, or social, chame- social, <laughs> social chameleon. Chameleon, yeah, yeah, where someone does something and you immediately start to like, I'm social, just taking it social comedian. That's just my personality type. I tend to. I, I do the same super thing. Super easy. Okay, so it's dangerous. We, we keep. Talk? We keep. <laughs> TEDx. You so walk. You on, were doing something, right? I don't remember. Shut up. You walk on stage. You walk on stage. What happens? Go through the 19 minutes exactly. Well, I walk on stage <laughs> and I realize that the person who did the talk in front of me forgot to remove their prop. Which so re- was what was their prop? I don't remember. Okay. It was a thing. A dead body. It was like a, it was a thing that I had to pick up and move. That's awesome. Cause I, I didn't even pay attention. So I was talk number two and I was so nervous and I like, and that's rough being the second act. No, I'd, I would have rather been the first or the second or the third. Cause that was in the first chunk. If I would have had to wait through the day, I would have been like freaking out. Fair enough. So suckers at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Zuckerberg is at the end of the day. Uh, so, <laughs> so I had to move that, and then I realized that the timer we were using was an iPad that someone forgot to turn the iPad screen shut off automatically after thirty seconds. On, oh, I was like, "No, I have forty-five minutes of content in my brain, <laughs> <laughs> and if that screen is not on, I'm in trouble." 
didn't have the password. So throughout the whole talk, I have to like lean forward and go, oh my God. 12 minutes. All right. That's cool. Another little, little seven minutes. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I noticed that. I watched the whole thing through. I didn't. He, I think he ended up, he sort of cut some stuff, but yeah, I, it was, hmm. it was like, I didn't do it too many times, but it was enough where I felt like, man, this is throwing me. So I end up getting down there, sitting. I normally only get nervous in my bowels. And so this is the first time in a long time I was nervous in my head. Interesting. So hmm. whenever I have to give a talk or something on a Sunday morning at a church, I can like not eat the day before and I will sh- my brain's out <laughs> Sunday morning, like without fail, just like full body cleanse time <laughs> be in the middle of setting up the, the space and be like, sorry guys, I'll be back in five minutes and come back, help set up. So uh, that's a weird thing. And this is the first time in a long time it was nervousness in the brain, which is actually a really good, like, I like that feeling. Yeah. It's been a while since I felt that. And after the talk just had this sense of, I can't remember the phrase I used with, with Kate. I think I was just like, I don't fucking do this every day. <laughs> like that yeah. was the feeling. Of, it's an it's an adrenaline shot. Yeah, yeah. But then skipping way ahead, finally watching the video back, I was like, my content was correct. My delivery. <laughs> <laughs> the, the old presentation side. That I feel like it was rough. But again, that's I've learned from podcasting. I pick up on all of my own the stuff about oh, me. Yeah. When, nobody when, hears it. Whenever you do anything with recording yourself in any form. Yeah. You always critique yourself beyond it's really good. measure. It's it's a good thing because through doing the podcast, I've learned how to talk better. Mm-hmm. I don't, Sam has also learned how to talk better, at least on the podcast. I don't talk to Sam outside the podcast because we hate each other apparently. I don't know. I just talk less because I keep being, you know, degraded slowly over time. <laughs> you guys. See, I have a teammate now. No, so not so you. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Not true, Sam. You never degraded. <laughs> what are you talking about? We uh, all get degraded equally this amongst is called, friends. This is called gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> we never do that to you. No. It's all in your head, bro. Oh, man. You're just crazy, Sam. It's, no. it's not. I just make fun of you, and then Silas makes fun of me, and you don't defend yourself. <laughs> so then I got up there. Um, I'm basically told. Well, finish chewing. Great I call. I appreciate you. Great great call. But talking and chewing, <laughs> not good. Well, I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> so I went to the grocery store, and this guy like, <laughs> and I got these amazing carrots. <laughs> uh-huh. I got up there and presented the idea that uh, we don't, as a culture, hold on to grief very well. We move through that insanely fast or not at all, and then told some stories of some friends who have passed, and... um. I tried to present. It's definitely, I would think it's, you say culturally, but it's definitely an American thing for sure. For sure, because other other cultures. I'm be assuming you went through this, but other cultures take time. Mm-hmm. Whereas in American culture, I think, and probably other cultures as well, we can always knock our own culture because we know what it is. We don't know anybody else's. But like, if you're if a family member dies, you only get what two days paid. Yep. There's a bereavement issue, like even a policy. It, maybe, maybe I had a, I had a, a child, a friend of mine had a baby, I guess a relative of mine had a baby, and then it it passed away. Yeah, and I just took a half day off. Yep, because I wasn't going to get paid for it. Yeah, isn't that bizarre? Yeah, it is a weird thing the the way we <laughs> try to create <laughs> boundaries around it. Um, it's. It's something that I actually thought of after listening to your TED talk or your, your, your TEDx. Your that's TEDx. Cool. <laughs> You'll be on TED talk someday. Is TED X, X, X talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. You know what you shouldn't and can't buy local? What? Porn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man. Anyways. <laughs> no. Well, it's hard to go from that <laughs> Back to the subject of death. But that's a, a brand. That's like a new joke on well, the set. I'm trying to figure we're out how to handbrake the U-turn. That <laughs> just <laughs> okay. So after no, you listen to the talk, you'd absolutely drop that joke like that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone starts bringing up death. Just drop that. <laughs> this is the uh, XXX. So you know, uh, just there. a suggestion in your yeah. in your uh, wedding efficient business. Don't drop that joke. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, if you want to continue your fishing you're like, business. <laughs> you're like, you're midway through the Unless wedding. good friends. <laughs> I just stop. So, you know, marriage and it's serious. Oh. <laughs> Do you know as what you As they're doing like the unity candle or whatever where they're like separate from the group. It's taking a little too long. I'd like to take just like a quick Jim. five minutes, <laughs> run something by all the guests here. Does this no. joke work well? <laughs> <laughs> no, you tell the... <laughs> You tell the the groomsman, the, <laughs> you're like, hey, <laughs> the groomsman or the groom. Yep, totally perfection. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Yeah. So it's back to death. Yeah, back to death. the The interesting thing that I was thinking of is it's not just that it's it's different. Um, in terms of I know European rule or uh, a lot of the European countries have like more vacation time, better just in in general work benefits. But it's interesting in a lot of the other like true cultures they uh they more or less celebrate death like the i'm thinking i can't think of the name right now but the the mexican holiday um yeah the um yeah. Muer- Mer- muertes i know is right but where they where they celebrate where they have the, the masks right yeah 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 they recognize those that have passed on my, in their families on my head anyway yeah something muertes Someone's someone's screaming on the other end of this podcast, like, guys, it's so s- simple. Just go, oh, it's that. <laughs> really giving those white guys a bad name for <laughs> not paying attention to any culture except their own. <laughs> so you know, like how there's other cultures and they're diverse. We don't know anything about them. <laughs> right. Just that. Yeah. But yeah, it, they have the space, and and you yeah. think through. There's been lots of different cultures in history have had ways of. I think what's important is they've had ways of tactilely with their own hands interacting Mm. with the process of grieving where I think one of the things that's gotten super sanitary, there's this thing where we, I think the actual thing is called disgust psychology where we take principles that are true of food that we eat and we apply them to human relationships. And so the idea of the whole, like, if I were to touch a, a cat feces to an apple and say, do you want the apple? You would say no. So in response, you should naturally want the cat feces because the cat feces made the apple dirty. Why didn't the apple make the feces clean? Right? We take that same thing, just the one direction of negativity and we apply it to human beings, which doesn't make sense a whole lot. Um, especially, like, I assume the three of us growing up with a Christian religious background, like, the one of those weird a priori assumptions that gets handed to us somehow through through different talks or just the the ethos of of our version of Christianity that's dominant, like, the idea, like, God cannot be around sin, like, when the entire narrative is like God intentionally well, being like, here we go. I'm God's right like, with you. Jesus is like, hey, so you don't need your religious people. <laughs> I didn't come here to heal the healthy, healthy people. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came here to fix broken people. But I think that disgust psychology thing has affected our grief where we have these special people who we pay to do the actual work of placing a getting someone to their final resting place. Mm -hmm. So we pay these people, they dig the hole uh, or they prep the body or they prep a a whole list of things. And then they do all the work. So you even think of like a graveside service where you show up, you're there to bury a body because it's a graveside service. And often what happens is you all show up, you stand around, you might sing a couple of songs together. Somebody might say a word, some prayers, and then somebody says, okay. And at most in our culture, like maybe some dirt gets thrown. I've never been to one of those. Like mm-hmm. every grave service side, uh, graveside service I've been to, it's like, and we're done. And everybody leaves. Life goes on. The body is in and the ground. You leave and the body is still above the ground. Yeah. And somebody else comes in. And I'm like, man, when my, when my dad dies, like even if I have to pay the same amount of money, to the to whatever funeral home or or burial company is available like will you provide a pile of dirt and about 15 shovels because me and my brothers and family members 
are burying this guy. If yeah. you have to come back and straighten some stuff out, that's cool. But I want to bury my dad. Yeah. Right? Like that just seems there's something See, tactile that helps you actually process the grief and the, even thinking about visitation spaces, such a weird thing to show up at a visitation. And there's only like two things to do. Maybe three. There's go say hi to the family, exchange some sort of awkward. I'm like, sorry. I'm sorry that you lost somebody, <laughs> which is really a statement about you. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's just a bizarre thing. Right. And then. Why are you there? <laughs> You're there to show up, to show that you care. You cared. Yeah. But th- it could be so much more. There, There's actual work to be done in a space like a visitation. So usually you can say hi to them or say something. You go visit the body or whatever, and there's some pictures to look at. And other than that, it's kind of like. Like, well, I It's could. a social setting. It's Yeah. 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 And so I, I had there's this. There's never food. <clears throat> There's ne- <laughs> never yeah, food. You never know. There's yeah. usually food for the family. That's to be right. Fair, but That's not right. for the not for the guess. general peeps. Uh, and so one of one of the cool things I got to experiment with, um, which it sounds maybe experiment with is not the phrase I want to use, but That's perfect. Uh, one of my old youth group kids, she died in uh, earlier this year, and she uh, took her own life with heroin intentionally. Like it was pretty clear. Yeah. And so we had this visitation space and I got to ask the family like, Hey, I've got some strange ideas. And luckily her daughter uh, self-identified as quite weird. <laughs> and so I was like, <laughs> I have some really weird ideas I'd love to do during the visitation. And so we ended up creating these five or six, six different stations, each with something insanely like you were touching something, you were painting something, you burnt something, you wrote a letter to her two children uh, mm. Like in a visualization meditation, almost where it's well, like, like we do a lot more at a wedding. Like we write, yeah, we write things to the the happy couple. Mm-hmm. We uh, have, have a, a gift, maybe or yep. a card. Yeah, we're at a funeral. You don't do any of that. You don't. And it's, I so I like yeah. that idea. That's a really yeah. good idea. Yeah. And I think having more hands on funeral. Yeah, How do mine. We I'm just gonna like have gummy worms in my stomach, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to take a gummy worm. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to be burned. We're well, given that, a science. You just saying decided. funeral is an interesting thing too, because often in a funeral space, I'm going to put the fun in funeral. <laughs> fun funeral. Uh, fun Woo! funeral services. <laughs> but uh, so just thinking about funerals, uh, I remember when I was super young, probably before 12, my parents were going to a manual Baptist church. So this is probably when I was nine or 10, right after we had moved here to Ohio. And show up, realize they have this basketball team that you can try out for, and it's for all ages. And I think it's because they have a school there or whatever. So dad's like, hey, do you want to try out for basketball? I'm like, sure. Yeah, that sounds – I've never done that before. Like, literally, any – what's a basketball? (laughs) Like, just not – I'm not a very sporty guy. And so end up going to the tryout, and I – Remember this? It's almost like what do you call that shot in the movie with the where they take the a- camera and they're zooming in, but they're also backing the physical camera up. That's not parallax. Yeah, but that like yeah. there's this feeling of like oh I got the ball and I'm in front and I'm supposed to is the first thing that I was doing. The constant the concentration shot was <laughs> like you just feel it all shifting, and so I'm there with the ball was the first thing I was asked to do in the tryout and I throw it and it like halfway to the- <laughs> just ding 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 me with it's sports like the part in the mo- it's like the part in the movie where the hero like doesn't do his best and then like you train a bunch and it does a montage of you like yeah. training to play basketball but that didn't happen right yeah never <laughs> <laughs> because the following uh the following Sunday I was at church and this kid comes up to me and it's weird how these phrases stick but it he just comes up and he's like, it's Harry, the no good basketball player. Oh. Right? Which is this really. And you go, I've never played football again. <laughs> Wait. Because <laughs> <Yes, right. laughs> sports are dumb. That's probably why I think all sports are dumb now that I. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just analyzed something about myself today. <laughs> but there's this thing that we do pretty easily, which is we take a human being and one or two of their actions and we reduce their lives to those things. And you can do that both in a. That's what bullies do. <laughs> bullies, but we do this at funerals all the time. It's just in the opposite direction. See, I think we should talk about all the negative things at funerals. <laughs> I I agree. Like and all the positive. At least. Things. 
at least there are any positive things. Right. No, I am all about this idea of showing up and being like, hey, this is a human life we're this celebrating. Dude, this dude was a dick, but he was also cool. <laughs> both, right? Yep, you get both He kicked of these a puppy things. once, but he that, also gave to charity. <laughs> that definitely was something that stuck with me when you when I listened to your talk because yeah. it was like really I thought I okay, so this was interesting because first of all, listening to your talk, I know I'm going to probably go off a little bit of a talk it's here, all for, good, man. but for you or for me listening to it without any real reason, like nothing came to mind. I was almost in tears. Like I was listening to it at work and I'm just like about to cry at work. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> okay. Pause. Oh, I gotta go do some work now. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So it, it impacted me in a, in a deeper way than I thought. Cause I was like, hey, I'm going to listen to this for intellectual reasons. I'm like, Oh, my, my feet. Why is he touching me in the emotional? <laughs> belly this is supposed to be an educational talk. <laughs> not a kick me in the balls talk. <laughs> right. So, um, that's cool. Thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah, no problem. The uh, got to try to think. What, so the, what? What stuck out to me was um, thinking that through, and you just brought that back to my mind. I can think of. I haven't been to a, a ton of funerals. In fact, as a kid, I tried to avoid them. I'd be, you know, if someone that I kind of vaguely fam like family knew, it I'd be like, sucked I don't want to go to this. Suck. It's do. always the same potato salad and the ham <laughs> no, sandwiches. Not quite it's that. always ham sandwiches. Shh. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's on my side. Um, He's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. I just have to talk about Harry every no, time. No, that's fine. Um, Keep going. But it was the interesting thing was with the, the conversations, it was when like, you know, the daughter or whatever went up on stage. It was always stage. A goof well, usually it was at a church <laughs> and every church has a stage. Yeah. And I can remember one specifically where it was um at the small little country church that I grew up in and it was just on this like stage and whatever. But um, there was, uh, it was always this thing where there would be a goofy story about them. Remember that one time that mom and dad did this one thing and it was funny and then it would be, and he was such a great person or she was mm -hmm. such a great person. They loved us so great, raised us so good. The end. Yeah. And there was one funeral that broke that mold, which I wish I was older to remember what was said, but I do remember that um, the person who passed, it was just like a string of people that spoke and they spoke about um, like serious good things that they brought to their life yeah. like how yeah. he impacted them. Um, fewer goofy stories, you know, some mixed yeah. in for levity. Goofy but, is good. Yeah. If it's the only thing. Right. We've reduced a person from a life to a, that one moment where remember yeah. that time when they did this funny thing and then that's all you remember. Yeah. Um, and so that is all I remember. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to, I the, never met aunt Hilda. Well, and that's, that's a good point. Why am I that's here? That's a good point. But at the same time, um, it's good, I think. And it's actually something we don't address in our American society as much. Um, introducing children to death. Yeah, and familiarizing them with one See, day this will happen to right. every, well, even as small as down to like your goldfish went to a he went to the farm or the yeah, circus. We, we shelter them from the idea that my kids are going to be real fucked up. Yeah, there's very Death temporary. There's temporary <laughs> things in this world. Everything is yeah. temporary, and even the living things are temporary. So See that tree? I'm going to chop it down right yeah, in front of you, Timmy. Wait, I mean, that'd be a good life lesson, you know. You you and to uh, maybe give the lesson of like one form into another like some things and so that other things can be reborn from it and sometimes things end for no reason and then to teach a lesson out of that because all too many people are familiar with grief that happens for no explicit reason right there's a thousand people probably in this town who have experienced not just oh grandma died because she was 90 years old and that was just her time to mm -hmm. go that's a lot easier to process than your dad died at 40 because of cancer. Right. That just sucks. Or because of that drunk driver that's perfectly right. fine. And that, and yeah, that, yeah. that just blows me away because I've never experienced that. And yet... Um, I was a loving God. Let that happen. <laughs> that's another can of worms to crack open for another day. That's a, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's, fine. that's another four hours. <laughs> That'll be part two with Harry Daniels. There you go. Um, we'll but, see you next week. <laughs> yeah. But yesterday I was thinking about tonight with the podcast. And so it brought up 
the thought process of your, your talk. And I thought about what would I say when my dad dies? Mm. Um, probably the roughest relationship that I've cultivated in my life. Man. Um, you know, my mom and I always were like great, and my dad and I have only been great more recently. Shh, mama's boy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I am. I mean, I'm I a mama's admittedly, boy. I am a mama's boy. My dad is a, you know, was tough, and when he was at work and under the pressure, he was not able mm. to uh, be what you would consider to be like a good dad. I still think he was a good man. dad, but like, you know, it wasn't what yeah was you're still healthy. grateful for him yes i still see the benefit of what he sacrificed for us but at the same time it's like it took a process of coming to terms with what was lacking in that Dude. and uh i was like so what would i say because like my dad and you you don't think well, this is going. why people wanna... boil it down to a quip and you say one happy story because you're doing the processing in your brain right now of what would i say that's why people brush it off and go. Blech. Here's a yeah. quip. Here's a quip mm-hmm. about a Christmas time where he slipped yeah. and fell down and funny. said a bad word, and it yeah. was funny, and everyone thought but it was. This great. is what I want to hear at a funeral. Right. Is so what you do that? What and do you I was say? thinking. I was thinking about it. I and I didn't. This come is what up you want to hear. <laughs> 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 but, but what, I, was, I was just saying. You, no, knew, just you saying, knew my so dad fairly well, or like you at least interacted with him. Yeah. And I assume you probably saw his his public side, and his public side, especially with younger people was always handing them a at the park like a here's a free ice here's cream sheriff, here's here, sheriff. yeah the sheriff thing yeah, yeah. That's. And he was he was usually very goofy um and i think he's great with kids he doesn't he doesn't relate to people between the ages of kid and adult <laughs> i found i seriously found when i got married and i became an adult my dad and i were like this like yeah. closer than close i talked to him about all kinds of stuff now we talk so cool. religion and cars and all kinds of stuff. But in that gap between, I don't think he knows what to do. Yeah. And that's okay. Stupid but that's, teenager doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> thinks he knows everything. That's right. Wait till he figures it out. It, I think it was a disconnect between you're an adult and you can think for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there was something about that right of passage yeah. that allowed and, him to shift. And it was definitely. You're for, self-aware now. Well, for him, it's because he grew up really on his own from three until now. Dang. Like, he didn't he didn't have, okay, now that you're an adult, right. or like now that you're, a, I should say, you're in that transitional like adolescence, here's how to be a man. It was just like, well, that was fun that you were a kid. Now you're an adult. Yeah. Suck it up. Yep, Buttercup. Yep, yep, yep. So you're now seven. But but <laughs> here's just, a pickaxe. Go back in the field. <laughs> that was his life, though. So <laughs> that's so I know. crazy. Um, and that's hard to rationalize because just like when we talked with the veteran um, last time, who was our age in Vietnam, we're like, I talk. I think about my dad. So my dad lost his mom when he was three. Mm. Lost his dad when he was seventeen. Man. And his dad was in between that an alcoholic and an abusive person. So always a great situation. Right. Right. And so when you think about that, there wasn't the home life that I grew up with, which I grew up with a dual parent home that was well financially stable. Everything was provided for me and we didn't have uh, like immoral practices. I wasn't dealing with like alcoholic or drug abuse parents, things like that. So really, I am a very fortunate, atypical person. You are a very small percentage. Yeah, yeah. and that's it's tragic it's, that that's the case. Yeah. So it's hard to put myself in the shoes of... You don't start realizing that till you hit about... Well, till you start talking to people and you go, oh. Yeah. Oh. Jimmy's, this was your whole life. Jimmy's parents yeah. were divorced when they were, you know, whatever. You're like, yeah. what the heck? Like, what's that like? You don't understand. Yeah. Um, but I guess I digress back to my original point was just that I thought about it and I was like, you know, there's a million stories where my dad has the goofiest, you know, stories that he's told us. And I look back on those extremely fondly, like his personality, um, even to today, because he's still alive, I love it. And I will always love that. As long as I live and I have those memories, his humor and his personality will just be like a great example. And I think I probably borrow so much of that because i <laughs> i recognize a lot of him and me now um which i i actually take that as like a badge of honor 
in yeah, a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah. I'm like, You're if I have the good him. qualities of my dad, totally. As long as the bad qualities, but you know, <laughs> it comes with you deal with those. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was like, so what would I really say? And what I thought about really saying, without knowing the exact words, would just be something to the effect of, you knew him as this, yeah. and I knew him as this, Same. and this was the progression from A to B that I saw him overcome in his life and like, and how that impacted me. And now like how I'm going to carry that on in my life. Like right. here are the amazing lessons that I was taught from his life and the, the, uh, the examples of empowerment, I suppose that I could draw yeah. from his life yeah, yeah, and then add a quip in there about like, oh yeah, he was a goofy guy, and here's a great joke and a story For about sure, him. Sure, but give me the actual yeah. process and hope that like maybe just maybe someone would go out there and be like inspired or take that to heart just a little bit. Right, right. Because everyone, everyone knows that public persona of him. Totally. Not everyone knows the, and that's the case with everyone. There's, there's like, oh, that person was amazing. I knew them. Yeah, at yeah, work, yeah, my coworker yeah, yeah. just died or whatever. The superficial and, relationships yeah, yeah. are everywhere. I mean, as as as, ex- <clears throat> as extreme as BTK too. What? Extreme as BTK. I'm trying to. I know what you mean by I what know, you just said. Yes. But as extreme as BTK, he was a great person at work. Oh yeah, but he was a serial killer at night. What was his name? Dennis Rader. Yeah. He, the the, oh, bondage, yeah, yeah, yeah. the bondage the bondage torture kill. He killer. was cool. Super nice guy. Super nice guy. Ever loved him. He was at a, the reason he got found out was a floppy disk at church. No. Oh yeah, he goodness. was an elder at the church, and he was a. Uh, he was using. He sent in a floppy disk, and, and it had backwards fi- or it had uncleared files on it from the church. Wow. And Dennis Rader. What an idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness that he was an idiot because. Sorry. <laughs> this is <one>. perfect. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But like just. You don't really know you don't re- half you don't- the people that you think you know. And there's something I've got like three thoughts now. Can I go into Do it? it. Go it. All right. So like go it. What? <laughs> go it. <laughs> Do it. Uh, I so I, what you're saying is really really important. I feel like, so there's this one funeral that I got to officiate, where before is the first funeral that I had ever started thinking differently about funerals, and before the funeral service started, I pulled the family aside and. Okay, just let's go over the plan real quick. Is this still looking good? Cool. You guys do want to do a people share story time at the end? Yeah, and there was going to be, there was a lot of people there already. I was like, can we keep it to you guys? Um, Because I'm talking, so it's going to be a while. (laughs) I'm going to try to not let it be, but I get in talking mode and (laughs) here we are. And there we go. So, said can we keep it to you guys and they said yeah and i said at that point i was like let's try to name not only the good but also the bad like not as a way of talking bad about grandma but it's important to just try to get a sense of who she is where she's been what she's come through make it more personal yeah and so what i had picked up on earlier was that there was one of the adult children like 10 or 15 years older than the the younger three or four. And no one was engaging with him. And I th- just notice this, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I say this, we go through the funeral service. Hey, everybody. Now, if you're related directly to grandma, um, let's go ahead and you can share a story. And he gets up and he says, I know a lot of you love, or no, he wasn't because several people had shared and he was like, wow, this is really good for me to hear about how you went to your grandma's house and she would make you cookies every day after school. Um, a lot of you know that I don't talk, never, I haven't talked to her and it's caused problems in our family. Um, grandma or mom for him, she starved me and locked me in a closet for days at a time. And it was like, Pin drop. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, well, this is interesting. (laughs) Like, how is this going to go? And, and there was something so healing that happened in naming the dark shit. Right. And if a funeral, if we're wrapping up somebody's life and we don't name the dark shit, like there's not going to be much chance for some genuine, deep internal healing. I think of, so I have three brothers and I go like, uh, 
Josh, I want you to highlight the, um, the good stuff in my life. Tim, uh, or Steve, I want you to say the most inappropriate things I've ever said <laughs> at my funeral, <laughs> because that's a part of who I am. Tim, you, I need you to bear the weight of naming some of the most hurtful things I've done because guaranteed Harry Daniels uh, sometimes doesn't operate with all the emotional intelligence he wishes he has <laughs> or had. And I hurt people like yep. guaranteed everybody in this room or listening, you've hurt people and just based on proximity or distance or change of life circumstances that goes unresolved. But there's a chance that at your funeral, that person shows up and they're not looking to hear 30 stories about the funny jokes that I've said, right? They, they're probably expecting that because funerals suck <laughs> <laughs> uh, in our culture. But if there's a chance that I can think of three people right now who I've probably hurt, and if they were to show up at my funeral and hear somebody else stand up and say, Harry hurt me, like it would instantly create a sense, a place for them to go, good (laughs) i'm not not the the only only one one. (laughs) and we're not gonna paint harry as this perfect no because nobody's icon of or version or alt reality of who he is and as a way of sending him on you're not gonna get just as an example window built in your name you know i don't want that just as like an example there was a video on youtube i watched and it said if there was a funeral for hitler for hitler yeah and it was talking about well he was a great leader Mm -hmm. and he was a fantastic organizer. He made organizer. cookies for the neighbors. Yes. That was and, a thing he did. Yeah. And like, yeah. he did a lot of good things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Improved yeah. the economy. Like, amazing. And so, <laughs> so and so that's, yeah, yeah. They, they were showing like the polarizing things of, and they like showed a, a Jew at the funeral like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Just like, why? Why, why are people this? happy about this? Yeah. Why it, and so that that does show a lot about what we do with people's die. And I think it's because we don't understand death. Yeah. Or, that's the biggest thing. Or grieving slash loss. But I don't necessarily think, I think the good stories are almost worldwide. I don't know. But I'm assuming the good stories are almost worldwide. Like I we're going to tell some good I things. I don't think you go to a funeral and tell bad things. I don't know no, what other uh, cultures are yeah, doing. I, but I'm assuming that's worldwide. Right. And maybe they because, don't even tell stories. Maybe. Because some cultures from my limited, I want to be chucked into a river. From my limited American experience, some cultures... I have no compassion for my body. <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just a... I mean... The, it's a uh, vessel at that once point. Once you're out of it... The... Uh, the and then that's a whole other thing. The sack of meat. There's we're, scripture. We are meat. What is? What are our thoughts? There's what a is, good scripture about that where it talks about like you're, you know, you're in a tent and the tent gets torn and yeah, yeah, worn yeah, yeah. out, you know. And that, that paints a perfect picture in my mind because I'm like, yeah, like... You have this internal self and everything, but this just gets worn out real fast. Oh, totally, man. Real fast. And I was, so I was talking to a customer's wonder. house. I was talking to a customer while I was at their house, and he had bad knees. And I was like, yeah, well, that's what our bodies just wear out. After. They're just like everything else in the world. Yeah. You get a new car after 100,000 miles. Our legs uh, do put on more than that. Right. Yeah. That reminds me of one of the thoughts that I'm not sure it came across as clear as I wanted to in the talk, but... Um, the idea that we already know, like if you think of the few most important people in your life right now, mm-hmm. we already know how that ends. One of you will be holding a giant pile of pain. <laughs> and see, you know we're, what my family, at least my siblings are rooting for, that both my parents die in a fire car wreck. <laughs> right. At like, like 80, they both better die. And what's strange about that, especially for a married couple who've been together for so long, the more intimacy you build and the more oh, you fight dude. for a good relationship, the more pain one of them gets to hold <laughs> yep. unless by some Tear mere... my heart out <laughs> on this one. <laughs> I know it. And it's good. Like, uh. But that's where, yeah, uh, there's this app that I put on my phone. It's great. It has no connection to social media or anything. And it's just called We Croak. And uh, five times a day, they send you a text message or uh, an alert um, that just is a quote about death. Ooh. Sick. Yeah. Uh, we crow. So metal. <laughs> so metal. So this this quote, and you can't go back and look at any of the old ones. It's just like you get this one quote. That's and that, even more painful. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> Screenshot, <kind> of, <laughs> click. <laughs> right. Um, but 
and so five times a day you get this little alert that pops it's the only phone uh, app on my phone that i actually allow notifications to come through on. oh it's a dollar right? it is oh yeah it is a dollar um oh i should buy it should just do <laughs> i it. mean it's a dollar You're but it's interesting it. because it keeps in my mind like man this thing does have an end and one of the the tricky parts too is for as much as helpful <laughs> And as good as a religious narrative can be to grow from one of the problems in a funeral space. At least it's number I- six unpaid, by the way. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's impressive. So a lot of really? people are. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, the interviewer a couple of weeks or the, the app developer a couple of weeks ago got ho- uh, interviewed on Kara Swisher's um, podcast. And mm, so probably boosted some. Yeah. Yeah. Analytics. Because they, they literally. They have no Facebook. They have no Instagram because they're like, we don't want you on this phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> we want you to remember you're going to die. Bravo on and then them. Go bi- yeah. So it's I like, love that. It's pretty brilliant. We're app developers that don't want you to use our app. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not about a screen time. How right. much can we keep you on here? Give us a dollar and then we'll just like basically tell you not to be on your phone. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because <laughs> right? you're going to die. So uh, I think there's something important to grab onto there. Like you and your wife going to die are going to die. And so it's almost like the idea that as long as you can hold that understanding that one of you is going to be left handing the pile of pain, it makes the conflicts in the day to day like, Oh, this is prep for end day, yep. <laughs> like mm. learning how to hold a lot of pain. And I wish that was something that made my marriage I like really the, good. I like that quote, learning to hold a lot of pain. Learning to hold it, man. Just can you sit with it? The way I like to think about it most. And I've lost a lot of people, a lot of close friends, a couple of mentors, a best friend. And um, holding the grief well. How old are you? I'm uh, 34. Yeah. So, Sam, I'm going to die by the time you're 34. <laughs> uh, please don't. But also, I mean, I have no control over that, so... <laughs> That's an interesting thing too, though, because in more our culture, in- the more intimacy you build. Yes, more. between guys, really. You're because, not allowed to cry at your best friend's funeral, you know? <laughs> or any time in front of <laughs> your guy friends, right? Like, no that's, emotions. <gasps> that's where it's like I've only cried once in front of my wife. I just don't have dude, an urge. I just do, it's dude, not right, like it's I'm not suppressing it. I am yeah. like one that cries every. I'm very time. glad that you cry. I'm very glad you my, cry. I would like. I would be able to count. This is this is freaking cry in dumb movies. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So here's the problem, or not the problem, but maybe the good thing. Until I met my wife, mm-hmm. I didn't cry for anything except for. Uh, so this actually proves your point. Like the bro cry. You know, your bros die. Your bro yeah, cry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I only ever cried before I met my wife, watching war movies. Yeah. So Lone Survivor, Lone Survivor, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. You start 13 hours. I Moana. was in tears. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, this wasn't very really a sad movie, but I love that movie. Yeah. So. <laughs> I cried. But, <laughs> but like, it seriously, touching point. meeting her after that, like war movies, yeah, I still freaking cry for those. For sure. But after meeting her, I cry for like everything dude like i feel an emotion i'm crying why am i crying i don't know that's amazing it, it's, you're gonna live longer than silas and i i've because actually you're, you're no, letting i'm gonna live longer than you because i've seen silas cry i've never seen you cry yeah i messed up <laughs> i mean you just you handle your emotions differently hopefully healthily but you don't yeah. necessarily have to cry in order to handle yeah, emotions I just beat well. olivia it's okay yeah well that doesn't surprise me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> So you won't experience a lot of pain at the end of that no. relationship. But that's that, how you're prepping for it. But that's right? the that's the thing. So like, <laughs> I remember a really interesting video. Um, no, I'm just gonna shut down and not talk to anybody that, and get like three jobs, so I don't have to think about that it. That actually yeah. would be, no offense, but that would be like the worst case scenario response that I feel would oh, be natural is. for you. Oh, right. Yeah. Like. If there was a, a, a spectrum of responses or, from you specifically, from what I know of you. I'll go sleep with a bunch of whores. <laughs> but people do. No, that's so wrong. I couldn't do that. See, but th- there's a, yeah, the, it's there's so people weird that do how it. we deal I with do it. That. I, literally, I literally had this conversation last night with Randy. Sleeping with a bunch no, of whores? No. <laughs> what, what would be the scenario? Um, You're like, so Randy. <laughs> or actually, actually, worst case, um, it wasn't that. It was, it was, would we, if one of us died, would we remarry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't. And That's another thing. Are you ma- are you married in heaven? 
Because <laughs> you're not. I really don't care. According, according I really, to the Lord. Yelp. I really don't care. I mean, if there if there's a great and glorious beyond, is there sex I don't think in, now no you're heaven? bringing me back. But I want you to finish your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I was no, just gonna say cool. I don't care if there's <laughs> if the there's the concern. if there's the institution pre sex was like God. Please don't come back. <laughs> right. <laughs> God, love- if there's not. But the thing is, my understanding of heaven is because you know I know all everything. I'm right. A yeah, you've been there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, preface everything you say with that. I'm I am a plumber. A plumber. <laughs> I think that heaven is going to be the way God created the earth in the first place with what it is in the first place. Restart. Restart. In- and that's what heaven is going to be because, of course, there's sex. Of course, there's animals. So with all those people who are like, oh, is my, is my dog going to be there? I don't know if your dog is going to be there, but there's going to be animals in heaven because animals give happiness. Right, right. Heaven's going to be amazing. Sam, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Continue. No, you're fine. It, um, crap. Ha, oh, so interesting. You're talking interesting to Randy. Uh, yeah, going to go back, but I'm going to address that point first. Yep, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you doubled okay, him. Okay, so it's going to go on for I've got 18 points. <laughs> no, it was actually very simple um, because, you know. That was a loud. Those peaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know, existential crisis. Mm. Um, watching. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> watching. Uh, Watching some or listening to a study that someone was doing, one of the things was that um, because modern Christianity is so screwed up and we clearly don't read the Bible. Um, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> wait, you mean that the pastors don't preach like historically contextual? Oh, man. Uh, what? You mean they take it and they make it fit a modern American or narrative? Even, well, we're going to side and keep going. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, there'd be a whole soapbox on this yeah, yeah, topic yeah, yeah, alone. Yeah. Okay, I'm but, uh, overcharged on that. No, uh, fair enough. Me too. <laughs> keep going. Um, one of the things that was interesting was that the concept of going to heaven is actually not necessarily scriptural, right. but the concept of a resurrection is. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? You are cracking open... It's so a, many cans at one time. There isn't a discussion of like, you're going to go up to heaven and be like, Ooh, angels. You're going to be according to like the books, various written by various authors and whatnot. It's, um, more referential to a resurrection, the resurrection of the body at the end of days where everyone is resurrected. It doesn't say you're going up to heaven. It just says a resurrection. It's it. Inter- that was just an interesting Dude. point. I don't want to go further. Which is why we that, need to not I, pollute because global warming will ruin this planet. Right? We want to. And then when shoot, we're resurrected, we we'll just die. <laughs> You're just yeah. like, hey, look how f- <laughs> you just melt into a. It's like when of you lava. fall through the map on got- World of Warcraft, <laughs> right? Or it's like over a bad quick again. save, and you just keep spawning and dying, right? <laughs> right? You just keep respawning. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> that just made me think of the mages in Age of Empires, where you're like, "Mamu Mega Kill." <laughs> So, uh, going back, we're going to divert back to the, my conversation. Talking with Randy. Yep. So, I will leave her answer to herself and Sounds me. Good. But my answer was no. Interesting. Because I thought about it and I was like, okay. And, it, and I was like, I was really honest with her. I was like, I've thought about this. Like, it really. I've thought about you dying. Well, it comes. It oh, com- f- f- too many side tangents. <laughs> yeah, Keep going. It comes to, it comes to mind. <laughs> And not in a bad way, not like, oh, I wish you would die. Absolutely never. Did but we talk about the thing? We did. Okay, we cool. did Sorry. after the after yeah. the beer and Bible night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, <laughs> and I, I thought about it. I was like, okay, I would say no. And the reason why I would say no is because I have never found someone so compatible with me. And I have never been so in tuned mm. to myself and to another person. That's really interesting. And even if it was like, a few years from now. So I theoretically had like the full rest of my life yeah, ahead yeah, of yeah, me. Yeah. And like, I could live my life with another person. I thought about, I was like every, and maybe, maybe my perspective would change. I don't know. I can't say for sure. I'm not in that right place. Right. But as of now, I'm like every experience that I would have with another person, I would think, man, I wish I was experiencing this with the person that yeah, I right, want right, to right. experience it with. Dude. And so I could never devote love to another person like that. I could go and have fun with friends. You could try to figure that out, but yeah, it would, yeah. So I, I just thought to myself, I'm like, I think I would build the best, like, 
it sounds it sounds bad, but sure, like when you're not married, say your spouse dies or you never were married, you certainly have um freedom. You're mm-hmm. not like you're not like bound to another person in that way. So I would use that awful freedom. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, in yeah. context, it's an awful freedom. Right. I wouldn't want that freedom, but it's there. So I have the freedom. Dude. I would live a life that I thought she would want for me and what I would want for myself. So combine the yeah, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. conglomerate the two. And I would honestly like, I thought about, I was like, I would become like straight up. I'd become a wizard. Like <laughs> I would just, I'd become an old man with a gray long beard mm-hmm. and I would sit there and I would try to become. Cause you want to carry that forward somehow. Yeah. yeah. I would want to be like the pe- person that like, I will never share my life with someone else in that same way, but I will share my life now with everyone. Right. So what I learned in however many years I had, I would then go forward and be like, Oh, you're, you know, you're 20 years old. When I was 20 years old, this is what like, boom. The second your wife dies, I'm going to shatter your knee. So you have to use a cane. Thank you. I pr- but instead <laughs> of a cane, such a helpful friend. <laughs> instead of a cane, I explicitly demand the Gandalf staff from the that's Fellowship of the Ring. That's what I meant. Like a staff. You have to use a staff. The wooden one with like the gnarly like knot at the yeah, top. Totally. Not that, not as modern updated. No, the like, second your wife dies, we we're <laughs> going to come over to your house and spend as much time with you, you against your will right. because and then to, deal and, with it. And then to bring levity to this whole situation. When I die, I plan on being buried in the same way that a Norseman would be. In the sense that I'd be put in a canoe with a sword, my shield, my dog, and my slaves, and then set ablaze on a river. <laughs> so like your phone, <laughs> right? your computer, your camera, they're your, your mechanical how, slaves. How do Polish people celebrate? I'm going to look into that. I'm unpacking a whole I don't know other can of worms. I don't know how the, whole, the Polish people uh, bury their dead, like historically. Are they, I've got like... Are yeah, they man. our slaves? Are we their slaves? Oh my lord. I know. Uh, no, you're, you're, bound to, you're, you're bound to the algorithm at this point. Oh yes, I definitely am. You're a slave. Uh, oh man, that's the okay. Stuff so I talk about. Let's, let's, let, let's let Harry talk. The, uh, the I love you. <laughs> yeah, I love you too, James. Hey, this is getting I, better, guys. I got my conversation out. <laughs> this will for get now. better. <laughs> hey, that's I, 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 hey plug. <laughs> this will get better podcast. Ooh, oh, dang it! I want to talk to you about your podcast too. Okay, so uh, TEDx, bunch of death. Continue. Yeah, I want to talk about resurrection. I want to talk about uh, zero faith funerals. And I want to talk Those about are super fun. I bet. <laughs> and I want to talk about uh, lots of booze. What did you say? Uh, this will get better. Um, my my alt. This will get better. Uh, idea. That okay, I want so to let's unpack your first thought. Resurrection. Why did I want to talk about that? Oh, um, it's such a fun topic. What? So the thing that I've know like hurt my toe. The thing that's been repeated back to me, or like there's this phrase like the Easter sermon. That I, it's just, that's the thing that I've heard from, remember your Easter sermon? I'm like, oh, I remember my Easter sermon. So <laughs> I start working at the farmhouse three and a half years ago. And the first year, Tyler, my boss, friend, partner, super cool guy, uh, goes, hey, do you want to give the Easter sermon? I'm like, I, you're like the lead pastor no here. Pressure. Man. Like, people don't want to hear from Harry. They want to hear from Tyler, the Easter sermon. He's like, I, I really want you to do the Easter sermon. I was like, okay, but I'm going to give the Easter sermon that I want to give. Right. And that I would want to hear. The the one, <laughs> what's the Batman quote? The the one the, that, the one that we just, <laughs> yeah. something about the this one that we the deserve, hero that not we, the one we need. Yeah. <laughs> this is the hero we need, not no, the, the one. We, the sermon we need, not the one we deserve. So I don't I know. know. Yeah, the Batman yeah, yeah, quote. Yeah, for sure. Someone That's Google it, idea. look it up, and then apply it to this conversation right now. So, Eyes closed. Picture yourself Easter morning. We're sitting in a barn. We're probably sitting on hay bales. No, no, it was. It's in a school, elementary school oh, on stupid. Sundays. Yeah, it's just like. Um, okay, we're sitting in a church. Yep, sitting in a There's church. There's no back cushion because they never have There's back cushions. There's grandmas everywhere, right? Cool. <laughs> and they know what they want on Easter morning. They want to hear about Jesus dying and then Mary Magdalene coming and and just finding him. And Harry gets up very nervously and says, <laughs> "I don't believe in the resurrection. Neither do you." Let me tell you why. (laughs) Thank you, everyone, for joining us for part one of our Harry Daniels interview. Be sure to tune in next next week for the new episode. If you have something to tell us 
or if you want us to talk about something, or if you want to be in the podcast, you can message us on Facebook, Instagram, or email us at thispodcastislava at gmail.com. You can listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, and you can watch the first little bit of this podcast. We had some camera issues um, on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a wonderful morning, noon, or night. And yes, I do have a stuffy nose now.